Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today, we discuss a bygone reference in perhaps its most essential form, in yellow gold, a Patek Philippe Calatrava 5127J stuns, but with full bracelet, you have a rare treat, perhaps the most appropriate gold for a Patek Philippe watch in the richest potential combination of band and machine. This watch, 37 millimeters in diameter, is an easy fit on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist and quite comfortable, quite flat as well, as it only measures 8.9 millimeters thick with a generously domed case flank. The timepiece is not broad across the wrist, only 46.3 mm millimeters lug to lug, it's still nicely constrained even when you include the solid end links of the bracelet, which swell the span across the wrist to a still manageable 47.6 millimeters. 20 millimeters is the spacing between the lugs, should you be bold enough to take this watch off its gorgeous factory bracelet, but I have to recommend the bracelet first and foremost, because the sheer drama, the punch, the presence of the piece on gold belies its size. Now, Patek Philippe describes this bracelet as a drop style. I don't know if that means raindrop, teardrop, or the tears of angels, but I'd like to think of it along the lines of the latter. It is immaculate, perfectly polished inside and out and silken, like a Rolex Jubilee bracelet, but without the flimsiness. This is even more robust in the hand than the Super Jubilee, and the easy choice if you live in a hot weather climate where you may frequently perspire and rapidly age leather straps. This is the easy solution to the problem. It also adds mass and class to the watch, and because this hails from a kinder, gentler era of Patek Philippe production, you can see the removable links are fixed by screws, not pin sleeves. Now, this watch uses a white gold clasp internal, because white gold being the strongest and hardest of the golds, a little bit more appropriate for small, mechanical members like the swing arms and chassis of the clasp. It closes securely, and it has a tight and sure clamshell lock that holds it resolutely shut, a little bit like the clamshell lock you'll see on a Nautilus. So you know that it's time-tested on sports watches. It's going to hold the line on a dress watch. Let's get this watch back in focus, bring it a little closer, and perhaps allow ourselves a bit more light to appreciate its lines. The integration of the end piece with the lugs is perfect. It also hugs the flank of the case, and I should mention that the case itself is simple and strong. Yellow gold works best on watches of traditional size or more modest size. Once you get over 40 millimeters with yellow gold, you really have to do something artful to prevent it from appearing crass. This simply appears in every respect sublime, right down to the gentle taper of the crown guards and the Calatrava cross crown. It's perfectly dimensioned and proportioned to make the most of the wow factor inherent in yellow gold and fully polished. Now, there are several different schools of thought in the world of Patek Philippe Calatravas. You have your classical Patek Philippe 96 devotees with the integrated lugs, small seconds, and absence of a date. You have your hobnail bezel fans, and then you have the school of thought that you see here, center seconds, a date, and crown guards. And I actually happen to like this variety the most. It feels the most contemporary as well as the most graceful and the most useful. I like having all my hands at center, and I like having a date. The dial is simple but strong, and its finishings are opulent. You can see all of the dial furniture, hand-applied yellow gold, diamond-polished and faceted dart-style indices, and you can see that, likewise, the aperture for the date has been hand-applied, consisted of diamond-polished yellow gold, yellow gold hands at center, a counterweighted lancet-style seconds hand, and faceted or creased dauphine hands for greater contrast, dimple-style minutes and seconds track outboard. You can see that to good effect. And the dial base itself is somewhere between silver and ivory. It's a matte or opaline finish, so there's no sense of a sunburst grain. It doesn't explode. It glows. It's very warm, and it's a nice complement to the yellow tones of the case. You can see the crown is a screw-down unit, and the case itself has a screwed-in case back, so though this watch is water-resistant to 30 meters, I have a feeling that's a little bit of a conservative rating for this watch. I would bet Real World is closer to 50 because of the hardware involved. Now, this watch launched in 2005, and the initial models were equipped with the 21,006 beat rate bi-directional winding caliber 315. This watch features the 324, which came online early in 2006. And because it features the Geneva Hallmark, I'm going to get a little bit closer here, 
But because it features the Geneva Hallmark, you know that this model with the 324 caliber would have been made between 2006 when the 324 arrived and mid-2009 when the Geneva Hallmark was phased out on Patek Philippe watches. So you have a good sense of when this was made. Gyromax style free sprung balance adjusted in a chronometer like five positions, bi-directional winding, 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate features a 35 to 45 hour power reserve, and it has a quick set system for the date, but what will truly capture the imagination and the heart is the finish. Mirrored on glage on the edge of every bridge as well as every jewel and screw countersink. Micro perlage and spiral pattern at the center of the rotor. Macro perlage below the balance. Cote de Genève linear across the bridges, black polished screw heads with chamfered slots, and circular Cote de Genève across the winding mass. This is a timepiece that you might wish you could wear upside down, but both sides of this watch are its good side. Throw it on your wrist and see them both on the watch box.